A very good morning to you and welcome back. Well, it has been such an awesome and educative talk with Val in an interview that they were talking about cardiovascular diseases, CDC. Well, that's been affecting quite a number of people. Well, let's take a shift and change things. Let's talk about youth and politics. Well, last week we began a topic, youth and leadership. Well, it ended up being a heated debate. And, well, it has been requested that we take a look into it deeply and intensely. And well, today we'll be looking at a different angle. We'll be looking at what's the place of youth in matters leadership. That's what we precisely will be focusing on and to join us and try to demystify the mystery behind youth and leadership, I'm joined by three young people and youthful, very young, energetic this morning. Passionate and patriotic too. Great, Muthiora says. So we begin from Martha Kabura, who is right next to me. She's the Secretary General of Mount Kenya University. She's the not the Secretary General rather, but the Mount Kenya University Deputy Chair Nairobi Campus. She's also the coordinator of World Merit Kenya National Programs. Yeah. Um, Asante sana. Asante sana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm delighted mm -hmm. to talk uh, and handle the issue about youth and right. leadership in our country. Great. Yeah. Right next to him is none other than uh, Muthiora Kariara. Well, some of us know him. He has been here severally. He's a former deputy presidential candidate. It's always a pleasure being here. Uh -huh. Y254 is a channel for the young people uh -huh. of Kenya. So mm -hmm. anytime when you'd like to talk about leadership, I have to show up. Mm -hmm. Inchinietu. Kabisa. Hey. All right, you're most welcome. And right next to him, we have uh, Andrew Shonko, and leader, who is the leader of Young Entrepreneurs, and Haso Yangu. Karibu sana. Uh, thank you so much. Are you related to Mike Sonko? No, I'm not related, actually, but I think he took my name. <laughs> <laughs> you never took his name? No, no, I never took uh, his name. He took my name. Uh -huh. And actually, when we come to the issue of uh, leadership, mm -hmm. It's our business, mm -hmm. and we take our business very seriously. Yes. All right. Uh, you just hold on the mic at the middle. Thank you. Yes. At the middle. Yeah. Uh, you. When we talk about the issue of leadership, uh, it's very important to us, and it's our business, and we have to discuss it and uh, try to demystify it as well as we can, mm -hmm. so that we can be able to see how uh, we can change mm -hmm. uh, what we can do. All right, I want us to begin, uh, not necessarily on the topic of the day, but I want us, because all of us were young, I want us to talk about the issue of uh, the money, the money charge thing. It has become a talk for over some few months now, and the deputy president just yesterday, he said that he's okay, let's not be regulated, let us give this money. And yet the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission came up clearly and said, we are applauding the Catholic Church and the bishops for coming up with such an idea. Junior as a what do you think about that? Should we continue? Are we justified to say that let's not take money to the church? I don't see any issue when uh, money is being contributed to the church if the people who are going to contribute the money mm -hmm. don't uh, have clear motive. Uh, the issue comes when now we have politicians and other people who have uh, who have no interest of the people, but they're using fundraising as a part of their strategy for campaigning and for publicity. Has this been used? Has the or rather, let me just go to uh, to to Kariara. Has this been used as a way of corruption in Kenya? You see, when you steal money, it's difficult if systems work mm -hmm. to put it back into circulation to wash it as they say so giving it to the church is a way of laundering it and the way that that works is when you give contributions in church it buys you influence so you're using illegitimate money yes mm -hmm. using illegitimate money to buy influence and political mileage that cannot be allowed to happen because it's illegal that's money laundering in itself. Mm -hmm. So corruption being the cancer that has affected Kenya since independence, if a move to cut on it is given by the church, mm -hmm. it should be supported. <coughs> Let us try and effect it and see how far we can go with it should rather than church, undermine it. Should the church regulate on how it's being given money by politicians? Well, what the church should focus on is the core business, which is winning souls. A community builds a church because they know they need that church. It should not be left to the politicians to do that job. I don't see why we should wait on a politician from Nairobi to come build a church down in the village for us. Let us live within our means. Let us strategize long term 
fundraise in bits till we have enough to build a church that's good enough for us. Let us not wait on politicians to loot so they can come share the loot with us right. in building the house of the Lord. Right. Uh, let, me, let me have Andrew. What's your take on the issue of the church and uh, versus the state in terms of politicians? Uh, for me, I think it's an issue of give and take. What are you giving me and what am I taking from you? Like what my colleague uh, is saying here, when you give money to the church, of course there is something that they expect in return. Let's say, for example, uh, the congregation that will be there, they'll be able to influence them and maybe able to get that platform to speak to them. But then again, if you look at the uh, kind of money that maybe the church is getting in return, is it really for the purpose of building the church? Is it really for the purpose of building the body of Christ, for example? Is it really helping the church to be able to reach whatever they want? Or maybe even that money in itself is coming to the church to help not only the church, but maybe to some few individuals. I right. think that is the big question that we need to ask to ourselves. Maybe giving is not a problem, but what is the motive behind giving that money and bringing that cash to the house of the Lord? Wow. All right. And of course, you as our viewer, we give you the opportunity to share your views and comments uh, through our social media platforms. That is on Facebook at Y254 and our Twitter handle is Y254 channel. Of course, uh, my Twitter account handle is K underscore Alex. You can interact with us on the, all those social media platforms. And of course, our SMS line is 20154, starting with the word Y254. Right now, I want us to dive into the topic of the day, that is youth and leadership. And I want us to begin from you, Andrew. What's the place of youth and leadership? Youth in leadership. Uh, for me, I think youth ought to play a very important role when it comes to the matter of, uh, matters of politics. But if you look at our social political system in our country, mm -hmm. does it actually allow or give the youth that chance to be able to uh, to be able to be of great importance to the politics of the nation? If you look at the number of youths that are, let's say, for example, in the national assembly or in the, or in the senate, you'll be able to see like there are very very little a uh, number uh, of the youths that uh, youths that are there and those who are actually there are they actually uh, pioneering or are they actually pushing the agendas of the youth or they are just there to push the agendas of those who brought them into politics because if you see how our politics has been uh, put for you to be able to get actually be able to reach to that state of being able to uh, be in uh, politics in our country, it has to take you someone else to for you to be able to be there. So for me, I think the youth actually have a lot to on their table and on their court to be able to push the agenda of the youth, but systems have to have uh, to be altered and be able to to see how even the motions that are put in place, they support the agendas of the youth. The youth, the youths are supported. Not that what, uh, whatever motion they bring mm -hmm. is only good on paper. Where are the action? All right, Andrew, what's the place of youth? Because you have talked about generally about uh, the place, uh, the open the open space that is there mm -hmm. and the ones that are currently there. But what's the place? I think the place of the youth in our society is actually to be able to push forward the agenda that mm -hmm. actually affects the youth. Right. The youths, for example, if uh, those who are alre already in leadership, they need to come up with motions mm -hmm. that actually, and bills that support the youths. Those youths uh, that are in, in business, a good number of youths are in sports. Are they coming up with, uh, with uh, motions and also uh, with issues that will actually be able to support their fellow youths to, be, to see that they have risen to the position and to the standard that they actually belong. All right, I, I, want I to think yes, what he's trying to say mm -hmm. is the place for the youth is at the table. Mm -hmm. Not to be the menu, mm -hmm. but as to be the partakers mm -hmm. of the dinner that's been served. <coughs> Everything rises and mm -hmm. falls on leadership. The youth are the majority mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. That means we deserve to be at every platform where decisions are made. Right. We've arrived at a point where we must come out very strongly and tell those in authority that if they do not respect our existence, then they should expect our resistance. And we are coming for them. They've taken us for granted and we've had it. We need value.
we need service delivery. We need for our voices not just be heard, but also to count for something. All right, Muthira, last week, last week we had the same topic about youth being recipients instead of being partakers and partners in matters national leadership. Where do we lie as young people? Currently, we're at the very bottom of the pyramid. They step on our shoulders mm -hmm. to get to their selfish I interests. And that must now come to a stop. We are organizing. We already have information. Our level of education is at a point where we are able to make the important decisions that we need to make. Mm -hmm. What we need to do as the young people is to keep coming forward and educating those of us who are still a little ignorant that this nation belongs to us. We must make deliberate actions that will move us forward. Kenya can mm -hmm. be great. And the only way that it will be great is if it harnesses its youth. Right. They are a potential <clears throat> that should be harnessed. They are not a problem to be solved, mm -hmm. as we see those in power today try to do. All right, Martha, uh, I want you to respond to the first question that we asked about what's the place of youth in leadership, and also journey together with have young people exploited the opportunities that are there? Yeah, to start with, I'm delighted uh, by the youths who have taken challenging uh, positions mm -hmm. in leadership. But also, as youths, uh, once we get the position, we should uh, use them, we should in utilize them, so that maybe we can help even the upcoming generation. Because we've seen uh, during the, the decision-making process, we are not involved. Recently, we had the BBI. Mm -hmm. And in the whole commission, we didn't see any youthful person in the commission. Uh, when it comes to decision making, we are not involved. And also, after now, we are being involved in some issues, but not all. We are pu our place is usually in the kitchen, but not in the dining, right. when they are dining. So uh, it is high time for the youths to step up uh, and, and to resist being used by politicians for their selfish gains. Because we've seen the, uh, the issues of the youth uh, being not uh, addressed, simply because we are used by politicians, we are being given handouts, and after they get what they wanted to get, and they get into power, they forget about uh, us. All right, Martha, yeah. have, we, uh, have we as young people discovered our value? Because you have talked about you know, being given some handouts. Have we as young people discovered our value? To such as to an extent where you can say, I don't take this because I believe in true leadership. I think uh, the youths are failing because uh, mostly we are being enticed by what we see, by the short term gains, and we forget about the long term uh, imp implications mm -hmm. of the decision that we make today. Uh, so you find that the youths mainly they, they, they lack education, they lack, uh, they, there's no enough creation of awareness of the implications that may come in the future if we make the wrong decision today. So I think also the youths are failing and we should step up as youths of this country. All right, Andrew. Uh, I think uh, uh, also if you look at the countries that uh, have a reasonable democracy, mm -hmm. you'll be able to notice that there are reasonable representation of the youths when it comes to the matter of decision making. And if you look at our country, for example, most of the youth have, have become what we call decision takers. The decision is made up there, and the only thing uh, the youth will be able to do is only to be able to implement what they have decided. So if they have decided uh, maybe something that does not favor the, favor the agenda of the youth, then that is what they will, will be implemented and they will, they will need uh, impact. And now we need actually to change that and be able to see youths actually being able to be represented in all avenues. Look at the commissions that we have in Kenya. If you look at the number of uh, youths that are there, you look at the youth ministry, for example, who are leading the affairs of the youths. People who are actually so old. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what's, what's wrong. We need actually to appoint, give the, this youth these chances. When will they grow if they are not given chances? Mm -hmm. You say that like we give you chances and you don't perform, but give someone a chance, let them perform, let them grow, give them avenues to grow. Let them be able to air their views. Let them be able to follow up. Let's see action being done. Let's be able to see things moving from one point to the other. Look at our, our politics right now. We are in that stage whereby we are transitioning from the old guys, uh, let's say from 
1992 when we had multi-party democracy up to now we mm -hmm. had we have those guy, uh, those people who uh, entered into leadership then if you look right now we are trying to transit from them not to the uh, to the youth and we have a couple of youth that are there and our hope is that youths will be able to rise, the resistance is there, and only those who will overcome the resistance are the ones who will be able to make it to the next level of leadership. Right. You did mention, I want, I want to, um, to respond to this, uh, he did mention about an open space that is not being given to young people. Do you think we have an open space for young people? It doesn't exist, but one thing we must embrace mm -hmm. is the fact that power is never given. It's taken. All right. So the young people must continue to organize. And organizing doesn't have to be national. Start at that very low level where you have influence. Talk to your neighbors. Talk to your friends. Talk to the people you hang out with. Muthira, how best can we do this? How, in terms of, you see, organizing ourselves, how best is young people? Can they come out and say, we don't want this, but we want us to be having this. How best? We know what our biggest problem is as young people, and that is unemployment, which means if things do not change, then we are staring at a lifetime of poverty. So let us mobilize around the issue of creating jobs for the young people. If I'm a Mason, let mm -hmm. me hang out with my fellow Masons. Let's form groups that will eventually translate into cooperatives and circles. And then let us lobby government institutions to make policies that are friendly for us so we can thrive. I That's how we need mm -hmm. to proceed. We need to be very selfish. We need to tackle the politicians when they come to us and demand that they have something that's going to further our interests economically. Our main problem today has to be just one, and that is fighting poverty. All right. Uh, I, I want to come back to you, Martha. You, you mentioned about Building Bridges Initiative, and it's a nine-point agenda. That was the part of inclusivity. And my question is, is this a song that we keep on singing about inclusivity, or how far has the government gone in, pl in implementation? Inclusivity, especially for the youths, uh, it's just a talk that you keep on talking, but we don't see action implemented in, in being implemented. Because you see, uh, during the BBA process and other forums that have been in, mm -hmm. yes, we, w we are saying that we want to include the youths in decision making, we want to include the youths in ABCD issues, but now it is so clear, everyone can see. In the, in the national television, the commissioners were all over. We didn't see any youth. Even the women representation was not, you know, we are supposed mm -hmm. to have the 50-50 women representation. But now- It's a two third uh, or 50-50? Yeah, two thirds, that uh -huh. is. But right. now we want to push it to be 50-50 because I believe what a man can do, <laughs> we can also do it. Okay, <laughs> we'll discuss that next time. All right. Uh -huh. So if according to you, we have not even gone, even our implementation is really failing. Mutiro, or rather, let me just ask, Andrew, I know that you are relating with young people, and he mentioned something about unemployment in Kenya, mm -hmm. and you have begun an initiative. What do you think about this, this whole issue? I think, I think that is the elephant in the house. And for you to be able to tackle and break down any elephant, uh, you have to break it down and into small pieces so that you can be able to be able to swallow it. And when you talk the issues of unemployment, that is something that is in a, in a house, in everywhere. Let's say even, for example, if you look at the rallies that we normally have, how many people will you see at, at those rallies? If those guys were employed, will they actually be there? Just look, for example, the other, the other day we had uh, uh, Resambu. Uh, uh, at Resambu, uh -huh. how many youths were running there? Imagine those if those people were employed, they mm -hmm. wouldn't be there. They would be somewhere else working and be able to build this country. So for me, for example, uh, uh, f for me, I think we need to put in policy that actually supports youth in terms of uh, even bus businesses. We need to be able uh, to give youth, let's say, for example, if it's loans, and be able to do a follow-up and uh, to see... Uh, they have been give, uh, they have started their businesses will they, uh, how will they, these businesses be able to thrive how will their businesses be able to go forward and even come up with uh, 
uh, with uh, something that I'm tr uh, I'm drafting right now and be able to see can we be having a youth entrepreneurship summits even uh, in our in our county level is this something that uh, the county government can be able to buy into and be able to support these youths whatever and no matter how small it is mm -hmm. f let them form uh, small groups and be able to support them and do a follow-up on what they are doing with the resources that you have provided for them all right uh, let me ask you this question because i don't want to ask it at the tail end of the show let me ask you, you mentioned about policies mm -hmm. what are some of these policies that according to you believe if they were if they were tabled they'd really be effective if they were really even implemented uh uh, we, we can have uh, business policies uh, that give a conducive environment in which the business will be con uh, will be conducted. For example, if the government is, uh, let's say, the, in the county level, for example, if they come up with a kitty, or we can have, uh, for example, the one we normally have for CDF, we mm -hmm. can we can have an entrepreneurial kitty that can be able to support the youths when it comes to the to the matters of business, and then maybe they can be able to get channels in which they have ready markets that are provided. R right now, agribusiness is doing so well, but you find the biggest challenge that is there, it's the market. We have, you do a very good business, you have the product, but the market is there. Can we have uh, avenues whereby these people form groups, they have a good leadership, whereby after they do their harvest, they have a ready market somewhere that has already been sorted out, and their products can be sold, and from there they can grow themselves from one point to the other. All right, uh, I'm loving your opinion. Uh, Muthiora, the issue of unemployment, uh, we always imagine when we talk about youth, and it matters leadership. Let's, let's deviate for just a minute and not only concentrate on politics, but look at leadership in general. Do you think companies value youthful leadership? I know of a lot of companies that value youth leadership because they realize that to move forward, you need the passion and the enthusiasm that comes with youth. And the most successful companies, even just here in Kenya, are youth-led. They are youth-propelled. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is to translate the same to government. All right. These I are two different entities. Yeah, the government needs to borrow what the mm -hmm. private sector is doing mm -hmm. because the private sector keeps making profits because they adopt the right structures and procedures right. and practices. Can we say that could be the reason why most people believe that the government is failing? Well, that is part of the reason part of the reasons. Yes. So there are quite a number of reasons. They keep recycling people who have proved from time immemorial Let's talk about that they cannot deliver. Well, I... He has been added another three years. I would say Mudaura, if we look at his track record, mm -hmm. when he served in Kibaki's government, Kenya experienced tremendous growth mm -hmm. economically. So looking at his track record, we can say he fits the bill. Mm -hmm. But the question is, isn't there someone else who can do what Mudaura has been doing or do it even better, mm -hmm. especially if they are younger? Because younger people are known to have more energy. Mm -hmm. They are known to be more passionate, to be right. more enthusiastic. Martha, l let's hear Martha. Is there anyone who can come in and fit in the place that Mudaura is right now? I think we have a lot of youths who are capable, mm -hmm. but it's only that they're not being given the platform, the opportunity, because uh, most of these decisions are made in the bedroom, and I'm sorry to say, because you never know what? the procedure or maybe the, the, the qualification that they want to find in a person. It is who knows who. It is a culture. If your father was a prime minister, if your father was a minister, right. then you're going to be put in the position. But it is not a uh, matter of merits. It's an issue of dynasty of politics yes. is emerging here. But the, I know, Andrew, you wanted to respond to that? Yeah, I wanted to jump into that. Mm -hmm. I think if, if, if it was my opinion, I would say, like, the age to retire in Kenya is 60. If you are above 60, just leave it to them. Mm -hmm. Give the youth a platform. These, these guys can do something if given a chance. They, they just need a chance to show, to show what they can do. Just give them a chance. Be, believe, people believed in you, that's why, you're, that's why you're here today. 
believe in them, nurture them. The time, like, let's say, for example, when, uh, uh, let's say, Mutaura, who is it, uh, we are talking about right now, the time he was in there, he would have nurtured someone else. And when getting out, at least there is someone who can pick up on them. But recycling, recycling, recycling all the time. Times are changing. We are moving so fast. <laughs> Even uh, in, in, we are in a digital world. Uh -huh. Things are changing so fast. And you do, if you don't change with time, mm -hmm. time will tell. All right. Uh -huh. Let me just add something. Yes. And please take this very seriously. Mm -hmm. It's a radical move. And to move Kenya forward, we need some radical measures to be taken. Right. I want every young person who will be attending any meeting or rally or whatever gathering, should any old government official come and tell you to employ yourself, boo them out of stage. Do whatever it takes to make sure that they will not continue to address that gathering. This is a message from Udiora Carriera to all the young people in Kenya. Anyone who has served for more than 10 years has no moral authority to tell the young people to employ themselves. Well, why do you think so? They should show us by example. Mm -hmm. They have suckled from the teats funded by the taxpayers. Right. So they should let us figure our way out of this. They should not come to pontificate on us I hope you're getting the message. Yes, I am. Yes. Let's not take it just because it's given to us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's palatable all mm -hmm. the time. Some of the prescriptions they give, they cannot take them themselves. So right, right now, let us say no uh, to BS mm -hmm. when it's given to us. All right. Yes. Uh, Martha, what's your take? Uh, <coughs> it is so saddening mm -hmm. uh, that sometimes back, I was in a forum mm -hmm. and we were with one of the CS. And he, she was asked, you're telling us to go and get papers, to get education. But after we've gotten education and the papers, we don't get employed. She, she told the youth, you should, get, you should be self-employed. Mm -hmm. Then we were asking, then if we were supposed to be self-employed, why don't we just, uh, just get the technical skills that we need to set up businesses? And the CS shamingly said, education is for the sake of education. All right. Where what are we heading as a nation? Who, who is and the CS is at 60 or maybe above 60. And she's, we, she's saying on a national television that education is for the sake of education. As youths, where okay. are we heading? All right, Andrew, where are we heading? Because uh, with what she has raised, it's quite a point of concern. Education seems to be taking preeminence in the country where everyone believes, especially with the new introduction of CBC. Where do you think we are going? Is education really relevant if the CS has to say so? I. Education is good. Mm -hmm. It's good to be informed and it's good to have it. But if you have it and it can't actually uh, play uh, any role when it mm -hmm. comes to maybe to the matters, to the matter of appointment, I don't see how relevant it will be. Because let's say if, if it's not on the basis of qualification, mm -hmm. it's on the basis of who is who, right. the relationship you have with the person who is on the throne, mm -hmm. then it will not be relevant in any in anything that you're that uh, right. you're saying in we are saying in this matter all right unfortunately guys time is not on our side but i want to give each and every one of us a minute just to do the parting shot or actually 30 seconds because of time I okay well about education mm -hmm. the value has never been in question what we should blame is corruption because corruption makes a mockery of quality and standards it right. makes merit irrelevant Please, if you're young and out there and in school, get a book. Sometimes get even two books, read, improve on your skills, get better. That education will open doors for you. And for the others who are in Nairobi mm -hmm. and along the path from Nairobi to Mombasa, will be cycling mm -hmm. towards Mombasa mm -hmm. for the Mashujade celebrations. Starting from tomorrow, we are urging Kenyans to be patriotic, to value their lives and hold their leaders to account. That's what the young people must do. Mm -hmm. Let's love Kenya as we would love our own families. All right, Andrew, briefly because of time. Parting shot. Uh, I think for me, I can say like those who are uh, uh, those youths who are, uh, youths who are already, already in leadership, they need to stand out. 
they need to do it because they are already there and they need to pioneer the issues of the youth. Those who are not already in leadership, let them rise. No matter the waves, no matter what come through them, they will get there. Trust the process and things are changing and we need to change with times. All right, Martha, please, because of that. Uh, I will add the government to create a fair ground when it comes to national politics, because you find the youths, uh, when they want to get into the leadership, the nomination fee at the party, the IBC fee is too high for the youths. So uh, let the government do something about it. And also youths, we should take a challenge uh, to get into leadership, start from where you are, no matter how small it is, no matter maybe the institution, maybe university at your workplace, that is where we start. Uh, heading towards the national politics and All leadership. Right. Thanks so Thank very you. much for making time for us. We really appreciate your coming. Well, they say that let young people rise and take their place. But this is my thing. Well, it's just something that I'm thinking of. A fish well performs well in the waters. How best can young people perform and yet they are not inside? Well, that's just my take. My name is Karanja Alex. Join me this and every Monday as we discuss matters youth and politics as we get to demystify the mystery of politics and young people. Well, Val is coming up next. Don't go anywhere. This is Y254.